This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 5, and verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll, the length thereof twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that steedeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Rukh the Bolan to the Apostles, and the elders are great millstone for teaching his truth, the fool and well, and peace and mutation to all you all came out there pushing and defending this <clears throat> gospel throughout the four corners of the earth, as well as the believers in Yahweh by Hashem Shai, the men as well as the women, the whole full of leg. This is Brother Kahana Allah from the GMS Hawaii. And I wanted to do a video, you know, going into, as we read here in the book of Zechariah, the curve, the curse that's going to befall the whole earth, man, which is what? Uh, the chariots, you know? Well, I was having a conversation with uh, the elder Gabar here in, uh, in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, we were going into how ultimately when when he how by Shimmy I was shy, let's the chariots fly down low and, and reveal themselves as they truly are. You know, uh, it's gonna be a curse into the world, man, and this is a scripture that, that popped into my mind. You know, because ultimately uh, the chariots are gonna come to do two things. And they're both good for, for the elect, for those of us that hope in anyhow by Shimei will shine the, the salvation of the righteous and the destruction of the wicked. It, whatever option it is, it's, it's good, you know. But for the world, well, it's, it's a terrible thing because for the world, there is only one option, man, which is destruction, the, the curse. You know, ultimately, uh, we as believers in Yahweh Hashem and Musha, our hope is that what that we get uh, delivered, and even if if well, we have to face death in in the name of Yahweh Hashem and Musha, that's fine. You know, as long as we um, you know do it in the name of Yahweh Hashem and Musha for righteousness' sake, we we're willing to give up our lives. You know. And if that's our lot, well, so be it. So if we, we perish, if we, uh, you know, uh, if we uh, don't get to see the chariots because of, uh, you know, a, a certain judgment that we had to go through, that's fine with us. But we hope that what, that, that we are able to endure until the end to see this, to see the chariots coming. To see the, the, the downfall of our enemy, the destruction of what of this wicked ki kingdom ran by Esau Edom. That's our hope. You see? And when we see the chariots, we're willing to be part of the elect. Yeah, we're going to be scared. And yeah, we're going to still be, you know, hoping of ultimately for the best, which is salvation. But. <clears throat> Uh, we're gonna be rejoicing as well, man, because we know that this is our Lord and Savior coming back. That those chariots that our brothers is in there, the, the, the angels, man, which are for our people. But to the world, it's gonna be a, a, a sight of terror, you know. And this is what what I was telling the brother, man. We, Salaki, uh, we uh, are gonna see the world of uh, panicking the world is gonna be uh, in a in a in a state of chaos in a state of fear and that's the spirit that the lord is gonna come in you know a lot of people think that our lord and savior how is just gonna come you know uh, uh, just like as a matter of fact let's just get like an image of what 
what the world thinks. What the world thinks uh, our Lord and Savior is gonna come in as. And it's uh, something like this, you know? A cloud, a, a bunch of angels just, you know, playing the, the trumpet. You know, and when, when you see this, it's a, it's a sight of, of what? Of, of peace, you think of peace, you think of forgiveness. You know, you think of everything good. Then that's not the way that our Lord and Savior is gonna come, man. Our Lord and Savior is gonna come with, with a vengeance for the wicked of our people and for, for the heathens, chiefly for Esau Edom, man. You know? This is why it says that word. This is why it says here in Zechariah that what? That this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. And it's not gonna be anything nice. And as you're gonna see in this video, I, I, uh, credit to the to the elder brother in uh, in Dallas. Uh, this is uh, his channel, GMS in Rome, Lions Fire. The brothers, go and subscribe to to his channel to be edified. But you know when I when I spoke to the brother Gabar, you know I had seen this all this video, and I was like, oh shoot, I'm, you know I'm gonna do a lesson. And I'll use that, that video that the brother brought up. Cause listen, man, pe people, people in the world think that either the, the chariots don't exist or that the government is running uh, a hoax on the people or whatnot. Or if they do believe that they're hoping for the best. You know, they're hoping for, for the so-called aliens to come and be friendly, you know? And it's gonna be the opposite, man. Because if you ain't part of the the elect of the nation of Israel, you're done for. And if if you're one of those that sees the chariots, you're done for. Because the only ones that are gonna again that are gonna see the chariots up close is gonna be two groups of people, man. The elect of the nation of Israel, which are gonna be destined for salvation. Or the wicked, the wicked of our people and the wicked of, of the heathens, man, which is going to be a curse unto them. You see, so let, let's play this. And I got another scripture I want to go into in the book of Joel, but showing you how the chariots are not for, for the world, man. In the contrary, it, it's going to do everything against it. They're going to do everything against this world. Son. What have we here? And this is a, a, a nuclear test that they were performing and the chariot, what did it do? In March 2011, the world was shaken by a massive earthquake in Japan that caused widespread destruction and devastation. But the earthquake also triggered a mysterious event at a nuclear power plant in Fukushima. After the accident, 10 strange objects appeared in the sky above the damaged reactor and hovered over the site for several hours before disappearing into the night. The UFOs were there for a reason. It's well known that UFOs have a keen interest in our nuclear technology, and the Fukushima incident may have caught their attention. Were they there to monitor the situation? or perhaps to intervene in some way. I was stationed at Malfitam Air Force Base, Montana, uh, as a missile launch officer, uh, monitoring and uh, controlling 10 uh, nuclear-tipped Minuteman missiles. Uh, I got a call that morning uh, that they were seeing strange lights flying in the sky. And, uh, I got another call uh, subsequent to that call, and this time it was a more uh, intense tone, and the, and the guard's uh, voice was very clearly very frightened. Um, he said there was a... Uh, a bright glowing red object hovering outside the front gate. It was oval shaped. Um, he had all the other guards out there with the weapons drawn. Right after that call, I woke up my command and uh, told him about the phone calls. As I was telling him about the phone calls, my weapons started going down, uh, one after the other. 
they went into a no-go condition, what we call no-go condition, they were unlaunchable. Um, <clears throat> we lost uh, somewhere between uh, six and eight weapons that morning. In the late 1970s, documentary film producer Linda Moulton Howe heard a first-hand UFO account from her brother, then a military helicopter pilot. Linda began investigating reports of unexplainable cattle surgery and cattle mutilations in the same areas of reported UFO activity. One night that fall of October of 75, I had a phone call while I was actually on the floor with a typewriter writing a medical script. And it was my brother. He was extremely excited. And the first words out of his mouth were, Linda, a UFO has set down on the base. He was a helicopter pilot in 75 at Malmstrom Air Force Base outside of Great Falls. And that particular night, he had been at a wing party when beepers started going off all over. There was an emergency. And the emergency, as it turned out, was that electronic signal equipment had gone off over a missile silo known as Kilo 7 at Malmstrom. And a sabotage alert team was reporting that a football field size, at the 300 feet in diameter, an orange glowing disc, was hovering or stationary, whatever word you want to use, very low to the top of the missile silo. And that it was casting light that was brighter than daylight. My brother said that the sabotage alert team actually had an argument with the command unit saying, you want us to go closer than where we are, which was a quarter of a mile away, then you come out here. And that kind of insubordination got people's attention too that something serious was there at that missile silo. Jets were scrambled. When the jets got above whatever this orange glowing thing was, it blinked up. The sabotage alert team said, we know it must still be there. It's just disappeared. As long as the jets were there, couldn't see it. The jets were called back. Back on it came. Began to rise and was picked up by radar until it Dopplered off at 200,000 feet. Well, the next day, my brother said that they sent a team out there to investigate that missile and that they found that the targeting information in the computer head about where the warhead would go in the world had been changed. And the next day, they took out that whole missile and put in a new one. Come, man, and Ultimately, that's the power of Yahweh by Shemiah was shot, man. And, and he's showing it through what? Through, through the chariots, man. You see? So the chariots are able to what? To change the coordinations of, of a target. <coughs> the target destination for these missiles. You know, they're able to what? To uh, disarm these, these weapons. And like we saw in the first video... <coughs> <clears throat> where the chariot just boom zapped and uh, exploded but, hey they're able to neutralize them you see so hey this this world Esau ultimately is Esau man because Esau is the one creating all these weapons you know <clears throat> they're done for you know and those of you like the scriptures say that that are hand in hand with with the wicked, you're gonna you're not gonna go and punish, man. You're gonna fall right along with them for believing in them, for you know taking the karagma, the MOTB, to try to save your ass, man. Like the scriptures say, he that loses his life for my sake, for my sake shall find it, but he that findeth his life on this I shall lose it, man. Well, be paraphrasing. Because all you're trying to do is, is keep living in this wicked world, man. Majority of the people, if not everybody in the damn world, knows that this is a wicked place. But yet, they still want to make the best out of it. Like, nah, man, you should be hoping for the destruction of, of, of this, you know, wicked environment, man. For this uh, wicked rulership ship to, to seize. Not for it to continue. You see, so let's read this in the book of Joel. Joel 2 and verse 1, and it says, The terrible visitation. <clears throat> the visitation of who of Yahweh by Shemel was shy upon the earth. Like, 
All right, so it says, Joel 2 and verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And that day, again, is going to be what? The day of the destruction of this kingdom. Ultimately, you know, we're going to face Jacob's trouble. We're going to face, a, 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 you know, a, a time of judgment. But the day of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is gonna be when these nuclear missiles and the chariots are gonna be <clears throat> are gonna be uh you know set off on the world, man. That's what we read in the book of Zechariah. That what that that was the curse that was gonna befall the whole earth, man. Because again, in, in in the minds of the military of of you know of Esau Edom, they're like, oh, we got weapons. We we decide the destination. We can. You know, and the man, whatever. I know, you know, you how about Shimei was showing you that even your own weapons can be used against you, man. Because at the end of the day, those are the weapons of you how about Shimei was The scriptures say that what he created this myth that worked with the cold. He created the waster to destroy, man. So even you Edomites that are ruling the earth, he created you for a purpose, man. I have created all things. Even the wicked for the day of evil, <laughs> he created you to, for this purpose to bring chaos upon the earth, man. To create those nuclear weapons, to create the scenario to where we could have that third world war, so that many people could be judged, man. A lot of people think this is man-made, but in reality, this is all part of the Lord's work, man. That's how great Yahweh Shemuel was shy, man. He got everybody in a trick bag besides the prophets, man. You see? And that day is at nine. It says that the, the terrible visitation, man. The terrible day of the Lord. People think again that the Lord's gonna come in the clouds just giving everybody fucking hugs. No, man. The Heavenly Father is sending his son back with great power, man. And people when when you see the the the, the vibration that the Lord's coming in, you ain't gonna be thinking about no peace and then and hold nothing. You're just gonna think of straight up death, of, of that you're about to die, that everybody you love and everything you know is, is done for. You. That's the future for the unbelievers of our people. That's the future for the heathens that, you know, have been ever reputed as nothing and that exalt themselves over the, the nation of Israel and, and blaspheme the name of, of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. Death, man. Well, verse 2 it says, A day of darkness and the gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, they have been. there hath not been ever the light, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. And this is speaking about the, the mystery. You know, and <clears throat> the reason why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reading Joel is because they, they go hand in hand, the missiles and the chariots, man. Because remember, he's is going to try to uh, aim these, these uh, nuclear weapons uh, towards Yahweh Shem Shah, towards Yahweh Shah and the, and the angels, man. But like we saw in the video, hey, they're able to change the coordinates, they're able to neutralize the missiles, you see? And these miss these um these missiles here are gonna be targeted towards wherever Yahweh Bashim Yahushua wants them to, wants them to go. You know? It says a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burning. The land, it says the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Their appearance of them and you know verse 3 is what before the, the missiles are shot everything is, is nice everything is green nice the, the earth is still uh, somewhat in, in a paradise state but after they're detonated there's gonna be nothing but wilderness man and ain't nobody gonna escape these missiles ain't nowhere you can run ain't nowhere you can hide
It says the appearance of them. It says the appearance of horses. And as horse horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devour of the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Because when these missiles are shot, it's going to be, you know, a lot of missiles, man. You're going to see them, you know, in the skies. And it's going to be a, a powerful image, man, to see these huge missiles just coming, coming your way, man. So now I get it. It says, before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall be shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. And we saw again, this, this is the point that I wanted to get to. You know, we saw in those videos that what? That, uh... <clears throat> that the coordinates were being changed, that they were, you know, they were uh, neutralized, you know, they, in, they were in a no-go position. So, hey, the chariots got control over the the, the weapons that Esau created for, for his purpose, man. You see? It says, uh, and they shall not break their ranks, neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. You see, so you have um, missile defense systems. You know, uh, the state of Israel got that that iron dome that they pride themselves in, but none of that stuff is gonna work in those days, man. If you fuck around and try to use that iron dome, and the chariots will will destroy it just like this this clip. I mean. Just like this clip right here, like, it, it, that could be a defense missile right there, and the, the chariot could be like, no, boom. Look, we're going to clear the path for the missiles that are coming to hit you. You see? And that's the power of Yahweh Bashim was shot, man. <laughs> that's why it says, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one his, on, on, so like, every one in his path. So, Nothing is gonna deter them from from their target, and when the and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So no other weapon can can hit it and and destroy that that missile. That's why the scriptures say that you know uh, the the words Lord shall not return to him void, but it's gonna what accomplish that which which he pleased. And it pleases Yahweh Shema was shot for Babylon the Great to be destroyed, for the state of Israel to be destroyed, for these other places that are meant to be destroyed to be destroyed, man. <clears throat> you see? Uh, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into in at the windows like a thief and when those nuclear missiles detonate man that that uh bustle of destruction man is gonna go everywhere and decinerate everything but you know first that that hit of of wind comes boom in some parts in the middle of the of the detonation is gonna be into into instantaneously and then the 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 further regions is gonna you know it's gonna hit that wind break everything and then boom you're gonna feel that fire coming your way man it says the earth shall quake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be darkened the stars shall withdraw their shining and the lord yahweh by shemashah shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executed his word for the day of Yahweh by Hashem Shai is great and very terrible and who can abide it and the answer to that is nobody man. nobody nobody can escape the hand of Yahweh by Hashem Shai man. and you people that think that you know that by 
ignoring the truth, by ignoring the prophets, you're gonna uh, survive, man, or, or by doing anything outside of believing in your Habashim that was shot, you're totally wrong, man. You're gonna be utterly destroyed. Because ultimately, this, this is the true spirit that that our Lord and Savior is gonna come in, man. A spirit of what? Of, of war. The scriptures say that Yahweh Hashem is a man of war, man. That the Heavenly Father, you know, he, his name is what? The, the Lord of hosts, of armies, man. So he's gonna come in what? He's gonna send his son in a spirit of war, you know, to show his power in, in, uh, in destruction, man. You know, we were, you know, spoke with the brother Gabar and we saw a, um, a video of these drones, you know, and people were like filming them or whatever. Somebody had thought that it was a chariot, but then we realized it was drones and whatnot. And, you know, through the spirit, I was telling the brother like, man, you know, when 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 the Lord reveals the chariots, because ultimately that's a sign of his power, man. And when when he reveals the chariots up close like that to the people, man, it's not gonna be for people's fucking entertainment, man. It's gonna be to show to put the fear of Yahweh and Shimei Awashai upon these people, man, and to show how great and powerful he is, man. Not for no fucking wicked ass people's entertainment, man. And, and, and even for us, you know, we're gonna be afraid, man. I remember a, a vivid dream one of the brothers in LA had where, you know, it was like the, you know, the end days. And he was saying how, you know, even though he knew in his mind that that was Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that, that it was the angels in the chariots, they were still afraid. Like he was just trying to, you know, run for safety and praying that, that the Lord had mercy upon him, man. Because at the end of the day, we don't know if we part of the elect until we go up into the chariots, man. If we get being dug, then we're going to know for sure. Damn, we, we're part of the elect. You know, we we them guys. But until then, you know, we prisoners of hope, man. So even us in those days, we're going to be like, damn, like, the Lord ain't playing. So how much more these other people that, you know, that don't believe that the chariots exist, that don't, that don't believe in nothing, man. You see? So hey, they're going to be in for, for a rude awakening. For sure. So let's read this right here in the book of 2nd Ezra uh, 13, verse, I'll start at the top. It says, and it came to pass that after seven days they dreamt they dreamed by night. And lo, there was a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, the man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And this is who? Yahweh Shai coming with all the angels, man. It's going to be an armada, a fleet of chariots, man. Innumerable. <clears throat> with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. So at, when, when, when the Lord, again, reveals his, his power through the chariots, man, ain't nobody going to be happy and excited and jumping like, yay. Nah, man, everybody's going to tremble. Everybody is going to tremble at the presence, at the power of Yahweh Shem Yahushai. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth all they burned that heard his voice like the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire and after this I beheld and lo there was a great there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea but I beheld and lo he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it <clears throat> but I would have seen the region or place where, where out of the hill was graven and I could not and this is what that father should 
the one where the Howard Shaw is gonna be uh, riding on, man. So it was so big, I just thought it was a, a mountain. Like, man, uh, there has to be a piece of uh, a region of, 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 the, of the earth just carved out, because what is that? But he couldn't see it, so <laughs> showing you that it was something outside of this world, man. And that's what people, you know, that people have not seen something like that, man. And this is why a lot of people don't don't believe that Yahweh Shimei was shy exists. We always say because the last time the Lord really showed His power unto all nations, and that all nations knew about it was what the, the deliverance in Egypt, and to this day is being spoken of. So this second time around. It's gonna be a, a major event, man, that people are gonna be like, damn, we're fucking through. Imagine the Egyptians when all that chaos was happening and imagine the Egyptians when, you know, they were trying to cross the Red Sea, chasing after our people, man. And then the waters were fucking open, like, what the fuck? Even though they were going after us, they were just like, what the fuck is going on? And then, Boom, the fucking waters collapse on them, man. That's the power of Yahweh Shimei Awashai. These motherfuckers is gonna try to fight against our Lord and Savior Yahweh Awashai, man, against the chariots. Against technology that they have no clue on how it, it works, man. This is how proud Esau is and, and these individuals that, that, that work for him, man. If you in the military and the in the air force and all these branches of, of of military, man, you really think you somebody. You really think that oh yeah, we the strong, the proud, the marines, or you know you you got these stupid ass slogans like you just the top notch of of everything. Like nah, man, how about Shmi is gonna show you what's top notch? He's gonna show you why he's called the most high. Thinking you could beat the Lord with these outdated, you know, uh, fighter jets and all this crap you got. When the Lord's the one that gave you that wisdom, man, to build these things. That's why he says that <laughs> he he's going to use his weaponry. Because everything is his. It says, uh, but I would have seen the region or place where I, the, the hill was graven and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore free, and yet there's fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. And that great multitude is who? These armies, man. Esau is preparing, he's preparing that third world war. To gather these nations together, ultimately Yahweh Shimei was shy. But they're being gathered together for what? To try and face the Lord, man. And it says that they they were scared, but yet there's fight. So the Lord was, is gonna put a spirit upon these people that after they see the chariots, the, the armada of chariots, and the Lord and Savior, they're still gonna be like, well, fuck it, let's fight for humanity. Like, you know, they show you in these stupid movies and they think they're gonna overcome. Nah, no, man. They ain't gonna end up well for you people, man. And they, they're they gonna still fight. Well, guess what's gonna happen to them? Yeah, let's keep on reading. It says, And after this, I beheld that, lo, they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, yet there's fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. And this is what, those laser beams, those, you know, uh, uh, weapons that the chariots have you know we, we, we speculate you know what what 
the chariots could do. But in reality, we don't know what type of power, you know, Yahweh Shema Hoshah is going to show the earth, man. He's going to show everybody. We know it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be out, out of this world. People are going to, once they see the first shot being fired, they're going to be like, what the fuck? They're going to all try to scramble. But Yahweh Shema Hoshah is going to get them all, man. All the armies of the earth, you done for it, man. Whether you are the American army or the Russian or the... You're done. This is why we tell our people that are in the in the armed forces, man. You better get the fuck out of there before Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know, get you, man. Whether it be during the time of Jacob's struggle or whether he was serving, you know, toward, towards this uh, grand final, fi final battle. Which is not gonna end well for you, man. You see? In verse 11, it says, And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that, so that upon a, an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke when I saw this I was afraid you see so all these so called powerful all these so called powerful uh, vehicles and, and weapons is gonna be for now man cause at the end of the day the Lord's gonna destroy them all so hey, just wanted to do a quick lesson, you know, touching on the topic of the chariots, man. These these are, you know, the the vehicles of our salvation, Lord willing, will be part of the elect, and the vehicles that are gonna bring the destruction of this wicked kingdom, man. So hey, you better be on the right side before it's too late. So hey, all praises go to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua by Hashem Kadash. Till next time, Lord willing, a hey, shalom.